Magandang gabi ho sa inyo lahat. It's great to be in uh, Shanghai. Ambassador Chito, Conjen, uh, Kuyugan, sa ating pong gracious host, uh, Mr. Larry Chan, and to the Chan family. Uh, kamusta po kay Ambassador Chan, who has been a strong supporter of the current administration, and I would say a, a, uh, a uh, supporter of the country as well, no? uh, when it comes to economic development. Our DTI family uh, executives or officials, Yusef Noya, SDR Glenn, and Mario, si, si Mario, Director Senen Parlada. Uh, sa mga nabanggit po na partners kanina from PFA, Cheryl, uh, our Cebu Chamber family, Mr. Tony Chu, uh, and of course, si Latin Nonoy, uh, Mrs. Nang, and, and the rest, the Federation of Filipino Chinese. Uh, George C. at uh, sa ating pamilya rin sa PCCI, Anvil, sama na po ang Filipino community. No? Uh, apat pala kayo rito. But uh, ang balita ko naman ay magkakasundulaan. Uh, congratulations. Tama ba? <laughs> uh, at sa ating mga mahal ng kababaya, no? mga Pilipino-Pilipina na nandito po ngayong gabi at uh, na, mga lalo na yung basis sa China and in Shanghai sa ating po mga Panauhi ngayon gabi, maraming salamat po sa, for finding time to be with us this evening. Mukhang tama yung sinabi ni Glenn na medyo yes sa atmosphere every time nakikita. And you know, whenever two or three are gathered, there is picture taking. <laughs> <laughs> Parang biblical yan. Eh. No, so, kaya ang dami natin kanina mga groupie and uh, selfie. Um, I don't know. I, I, I know. I don't know how tired you are. Pero kami po ay eh, dalawang oras lang natulog. Kaya para kami jet lag kahit nasa Shanghai tayo ngayon. So, dalawang oras lang. No? Kasi we arrived early morning yesterday. And we started. Mahaga na gumpisa yung. Kaya po pala kami nandito. We are here for the uh, uh, first ever China International Import Expo. And uh, thanks to the efforts of Ambassador Chito. And of course, the, the good the friendship of President Xi Jinping and our president, our very hardworking, inspiring leader, President uh, Rodrigo Roa Duterte. Talagang napagkasundo ang, ang Pilipinas sa uh, China. And China, China, every time we have bilateral meetings with uh, President Xi Jinping in a table, he, would, he has a soft heart for the Philippines. And I think it's particularly because of our President Duterte. I remember the first time we were here, October or November 2016, immediately sabi ni President Xi, I will leave all the suspension of uh, export license ng mga Filipino mango exporters. Immediately, there were 23 mango exporters. Then a month after, we will issue a PO, purchase order, hindi lang pangako, purchase order of about $1.7 billion dollars of uh, imports to come from the Philippines as a way of China supporting the Philippine economy. And President Xi also mentioned that I want to help balance our trade because right now our trade uh, relation with China, while it's growing, our trade deficit is also growing. No? Uh, we're importing more, Philippines is importing more than we are exporting to China. But consciously, and President Xi Jinping is aware of that, he said, that I will try to help uh, Filipino products enter, gain more access, market access to, to China. Because he realized that nagkakahirap pa nun. And, you know, pag hindi maganda rin relationship, hirap din pumasok yung produkto natin dito. That's the reality. Mabilis gumalaw ang, ang connection ng relationship sa customs. Uh, within the same week, humihirap ang pasok ng Philippine products dito. But, um, I guess we understand them. In the meantime, nung masama ang relationship ng mga nakaraang panahon, tayo yung tuloy-tuloy nag import from China. Samantalang ang China medyo pumigil ng importation. That's the reality. That's the reason why we used to have a balanced trade with China, I think seven years ago, or maybe nine years ago. <coughs> but now we're, it's really lopsided. So, so China uh, said, told us that he will, uh, especially the president, he told us to, that he will help balance the trade and they'll buy more from the Philippines. That's why yung kwento ko kanina, they issued POs and they continue to buy. Our exports grew at a certain point, 30% yung exports natin to China. They're trying to help balance. It's just that napakalaki lang ng deficit. 
Uh, and that's the reason why we are here because for the first time, China has conducted this uh, International Import Expo because they realized that they are in trade surplus with many partners, trading partners, other than the U.S. and other countries. And that's the reason why they want, they said that uh, in pursuing prosperity, it has to be shared and, and they, they, there's a conscious effort really to address the trade imbalance and they want to import more. That's why for the first time, there won't be any Chinese export, exporter doing the exhibit in the, in the, in the Chinese uh, CIIE, their National Import Expo. They're really uh, all sellers to China market, you know, exhibitor, exhibitors ngayon na nangyayari ngayon sa CIIE. So that's the reason why we were here. And we have a, uh, a national or a country pavilion. We'll open, we will open it tomorrow. This morning we had an opening already of of that expo uh, led by President Xi Jinping and, and many other leaders, world leaders. So, um, in, in trying to, I, I, I just remember that, uh, so we're having Usa, Usa Pang Trabaho Negosyo Kapuaya. And we talk of DTI, Department of Trade and Industry. Our mandate really can be summarized in this Trabaho Negosyo Kapuaya. We provide jobs, we want to promote investment that will lead to jobs, pero Maganda naman ang balita, bumaba ng unemployment rate from what used to be 6.6%, it's now 5.4%. It's maraming employed, it's a more job. Pero marami pa rin, meron pa rin natitira ng 5.4% unemployed. So we're saying, kung di ka makahanap ng trabaho, you have to have business opportunities. That's why we promote negosyo. So, so entrepreneurship. Uh, walang dahilang hindi umama ng mga ating kababayan kung magsisikap, magsisipag, at Talagang will have that positive entrepreneurial mindset and know-how. So we go around the country, we, we do a lot of free seminars, seminars that we are able to bring now abroad through, through our uh, commercial attaches and the embassies of uh, DFA, part in partnership. We bring seminars on entrepreneurship so that ang ating po mga kababayan, uh, OFWs, uh, can also be disoriented on the uh, possibilities and the potentials of being successful as well if you are and if your family member could be an entrepreneur. No? What may upside, no? Kung hindi makahanap ng trabaho, may negosyo pwedeng pasukin and lahat pwedeng magtagumpay kung gugustuhin at kung may positive uh, know-how and positive mindset and know-how. So, and so we teach a lot, a lot of these uh, principles uh, nationwide as well as in communities, OFW communities abroad. So that's been the, the mandate. And I believe that uh, the president uh, invited me to join the government at the start because our president is very sincere in really trying to uh, help our Kababayans to be uplifted, no? uh, beat poverty, and, uh, and really move up in life. And that's been the passion of the president. Basta nahihirapan ng tao, nagbibida, walang trabaho, naawang president, and he'd really like to do his share and help. No? And so we're doing a lot of these programs. So aside from these seminars, mentoring, we simplify also our, our program, Micro SME, konting commercial lang ng content, we into a 7M framework. So we do this uh, change in mindset, mastery, you know, Pag hindi lang mindset, kailangan mara, alam mo rin yung mga principles on entrepreneurship. So mastery, uh, product development kasama doon, brand development, financial literacy, uh, marketing, branding, etc. No? And, and, and then of course, main mentoring. So that's the third M. So mindset, mastery, and mentoring. So continuous mentoring after all the seminars. Now the, the, the DTI also would provide financing money. No? So P3, uh, that's Pondo sa Pagbabago at pag -asenso. Because our president, ayaw niya yung, again, nahirap, alam niya yung mga 5-6. Nagpapahirap sa mga Pilipino, so galit siya sa 5-6. Gusto niyang patayin yun. Yung, yung 5-6, hindi yung nagpapautang. Gusto niya rin patayin talaga yun. So, kaya niya, hindi na natin yan. Pero bago natin yung friend, kailangan may offer tayo. Kaya nag-offer din ng DTI ng 5-6. I-5-6. 5-6, pero one year. You know, 20% pero one year, hindi 20% per week or 20% per month. You know, 5-6 eh. No? 20%. So 5-6 pero per year. And, and so we have that money kung may meron tayong kamag-anak na may negosyo na. Kasi nakita yan ng presidente pag nagtataxi siya 
taxi nung nagkawang mayor siya, di ba? Kikita niya sa palengke, 3 a.m. nag uh, nag uh, ano sa sa palengke, nag-aayos ng mga paninda, nare-realize niya, kulang ang mga puhunan nito, saan sila umuutang, kapit sa patalim, 5-6. So, so, immediately, I think just about the first year of his presidency, we started with this program in December 2016, I believe. Uh, na nag-offer na rin tayo ng uh, microfinancing kapalit ito. So, today we have about siguro over 52,000 borrowers. About, we are now on our second billion, dalawang one billion na naging budget. Or we are working on our third billion next year. Hopefully, there will be a five billion uh, bigger budget uh, so that we can catch up. Because the estimate is about 30 billion ang nakapalaot na 5-6. So, ang daming papalitan natin. Replace natin. Maybe si Mr. Chan can help also in uh, replacing the 5-6. No? Uh, so we have partners there like Card MRI. Alam nyo yan, yung Card MRI microfinancing. They are putting in 200 million of their money and they place it, they call it also P3. No? Pa para lang in support of the program, but using their money and their network. They have 6 million borrowers already. So they have, they have a huge base. So thanks to Dr. Uh, Ali. Uh, Jaime Ali. So, so may, may money, and then let me try to recall. And then there's machine also, that's the other end. We, we help with equipment. So, yung mga, siguro yung equipment na nakita natin kanina, Mr. Chan, some of those we provide to the micro SMEs, but not as modern as your equipment, but maybe roasting, processing, juice making, like to a calamansi grower community, we give them the machine to process it into juice concentrates, etc. So, weaving machine, sewing machine, and, and many other equipment. So, we provide the machine. So, and then we provide, offer also other models of businesses. That's why we offer franchising, direct selling, so models of businesses. So, talagang maraming choices na ang pagpipilian ng kung sino man gusto magigosya. And last but not the least in the 7, the 7 M is uh, market access. If you have already that product after the training, and the support, financing, machines, etc. The other product, we even give you market access. So we we had uh, we had some innovations also. Yung innovation in the amongst the private companies, I believe it can also be in government. So we have a lot of new programs, uh, like uh, would you believe a uh, Mr. Chan knows this? Na pag magpapaso ka ng produkto sa grocery, you have to pay a listing fee, no? Or maybe three million to ten million per product. No? Listing fee, para lang ma mabenta ka sa grocery. No? Or, or when you want your product to be displayed in the malls, uh, you have to pay the rental, maybe 30000 per month for a small kiosk, times 12 month advance payment, no? meron pang deposit, etc. So, laki ng puhunan ka agad. So, a micro, a micro entrepreneur will, will think twice to... to uh, to really start a business or maybe may produkto siya, hindi niya alam sa mabenta. So we came up with a, what we call Go Local. Eh, Coco narinig niyo na. It's our way to mainstream very good, very nice micro SME products. And it's for free. Basta maganda, we, in other words, we incentivize them, we encourage them to have competitive, up upgraded products and you can deserve to be in a mall for free. The DTI Go Local program will carry your product. And we're getting it for free also. No big budget from government. Because we talked to the small owners and we told them, give us a free, a free space. So may, may innovation done. Hindi naman sila sunod lang na free space. Para bigay nyo sa amin ng free yan, we'll give to you the business. We're not after the business and the pesos and cents. We don't have the recibo. Kayo may recibo. Kayo mag-operate. Sa nyo yung benta, sa nyo yung tubo. Just give, display and carry these products for free. So, payag sila. And in effect, make presence na. Ayang dinimand lang namin, ground floor, mainstream market, high food traffic. And now, you can see MSMB products being uh, available, merchandise for free. And they can be sold there. And the idea is to be discovered there. It's like a trade fair. Pero ang problema ko sa trade fair, three days, four days, tapos na saan nakukunin, saan na magbebenta yung product. Ito, everyday, mainstream market. So, yung produkto ni Ms. Cheryl, kaya lang advance sa si Ms. Cheryl o rice pa, uh, kung hindi pa siya na-launch nun sa mall, dito siya pwedeng-pwede. 
pero magaling na siya at malaki na yung product niya so she's on her own pero kung hindi pa siya kung nag-umpisa siya no maybe 2 years ago or matagal na ba 3 years ago yung talaga nang umpisa pa siya siguro nandito na siya nakikerry na siya sa sa go local and uh, innovative products are, are sold there for free i mean the merchandising for free so those are initiatives and then we have the auto philippine hub etc so we provide all this 360 degrees support so that really our kababayans at yung yung pong mga kamag-anak nyo in the, in the sa, sa Pilipinas can be encouraged also to to uh, to be educated entrepreneurship to entrepreneurship education and to try their luck in business but this time better chances because they're learned tinaturuan sila better chances and with government support and that's the wish of the president to really give them opportunities sabi nga uh, bigyan mo ng opportun ng ano uh, ano to, abilidad, no? Uh, uh, abilidad uh, at oportunidad, no? Para lahat ay umundad, no? So ganun yung aming motor engine. Okay, so yun po yung program niya. Now let me go to the presentation. Don't worry, uh, target before 8 p.m. tapos tayo. No? But I just like to give you an update. Now pisahan na po ni Ambassador Chito earlier. But, uh, Obama. Oh, you want me up on that? So, there's an update. So, what we're basically telling investors every time we meet investors and give an update on, on the Philippines. Thank you. Uh, see, kayo, kayo pong nag-iisip, magnegosyo, or yung kamag-anak nyo, ninyo, kamusta rin po niya dyan nasa kabilang kwarto. Uh, hello po, at, uh, Oh yeah, mga kamag-anak po natin na nasa Pilipinas, sabihin niyo po, now is the best time to get into business. You know what? Even China before, I think 40 years ago, sabi nga nila, mahirap din sila. Or even at that earlier on, South Korea, even Taiwan, mahirap din yan, mga bansa na yan. Pero nung lumalaki na sila, lahat ng negosyo ng nagtayo doon, nadadala sila. It's riding on the growth of the economy, the momentum. And so that's a good thing that can happen also, and that's, we believe it's happening in the Philippines. If you start now, never too late, and you can ride on the economic growth. If you don't participate in any way, hanap ng trabaho, or, or to tumaya ka na nagnegosyo ka, no? or even in the stock market, mababa ang stocks na yun, ang, ang PE ratio, mababa, pwede ka pang sumali ngayon, you ride on the growth. May pangunang ka dapat. Either yung hard work, hirap mo, or puhunan kapital. Because right now, our country is really experiencing a breakout. Yung ibig sabihin breakout talagang lumalago. And I, we believe that it's really on a very good momentum. And I'll show you some charts. So una-una, the demographic sweet spot. Our country is composed, narinig nyo na to, young age, young population, 24 years old average compared to the other countries and the rest of the world. Unlike Japan, medyo nag-age na yung mga population. In Philippines, it's just 24 years old. And I mentioned earlier na bumaba ang unemployment rate. Kung titingnan natin, young, employed, may pera, since they're young, ilang taong pang magpapalaki yan, magpapayaman yan. And you are basically seeing a growing consumer base and a growing purchasing with high purchasing power. So that's that's the beauty of our economy now. Na maraming tao, na there's a growing middle class employed, and that's a much larger, uh, much larger consumer base for any business that you can think of. Of course, matututunan din natin ng business has to be relevant, no? You have to make sure that your products are relevant and, of course, innovative. So that's one, the demographic sweet spot is there leading to a much faster growing consumer base. Next. Next is a blackout. Next. <laughs> Sorry. Next. Yeah. And the, the growth rate mentioned. <coughs> growth rate mentioned. Actually, we have about uh, over 75 quarters, 53 months, quarters of positive growth. And until now, we're still hitting, in fact, the year-to-date natin is 6.3. That was first half, yung dalawang quarter, first two quarter. The first half is still averaging 6.3. But the beauty, the good thing happening in with the kind of growth we're having, 
is that it's not only led by services. That is services, the uh, call centers, BPO, financial services, and all the services. In the industry, industry used to be growing at about 3%, 2 to 3% growth. Now it's even industry is growing 7% on the average. Back in industry important, manufacturing. They provide decent jobs, production, manufacturing, like the DIY group. So, so, you now have two engines firing. Agriculture, which used to be negative growth, not just positive also, but still uh, big room for improvement. On the demand side, this is the supply side. The economy has two sides. The so, so demand side naman, usually called CIGX minus M. So, CIGX, in the grade school, yun, di ba? consumption, no? consumption, Investment, capital formation, government spending, exports minus imports. So, yun yung formula dun sa GDP on the demand side. And used to be led by consumption. Kaya nga ang consumption accounts for about 70% of the total economy. Because for many years, yan ang double digit growth being led by consumption. Problema sa consumption, when our consumption is growing, at konti yung capacity mo, na tinuproduce, saan kukuha ng pangbigay sa consumption? pag import ka. Diba? Kaya tumataas yung import sa atin. Maliit yung manufacturing base mo, at taas ng consumption mo, you tend to import more than what you produce, and with more than what you can even export. Kaya structurally, sinasabi natin, for the longest time, for many decades, we've been a, a heavy importer, a net importer. Kaya tayo may trade deficit forever. So, our task now is how do we sort of limit consumption but really grow the, the investment part and the government part. Because dito papaso, when you have higher growth for this, you basically are building for the future capacity. And so, right now, the beauty again is we have a kind of growth that's now more investment-led growth, 16%. From our expenditure, because of the bill bill, we started to uh, spend now on the bill bill bills, now double digit also, it used to be single digit growth. So we're now seeing strong capital, investment, strong government expenditure. Reason lang po, pinapakita natin to, just to show you the structure of our growth. It's not just growth in consumption, but really growth for capacity that's building for future. So I think today or tomorrow, lalabas yung manufacturing index. Again, for the first time, we reach again a 54 number. We used to be 50, 51, 52. That's an index, medyo mahabang story, but it's a purchasing manager's index. Now. So it reflects the, the growth, robustness of the manufacturing sector. So it's important, again, that, that investments are growing, growing into manufacturing because, again, in the future, we want to build a bigger manufacturing base to produce for the local requirements and may surplus to export. So, para yung aming mga trabaho nila, Senen, Director Senen, ay magkaroon na ng trade surplus tayo. Kaya ho, matagal na, ano yan, it's a structural change, but we're, that's what we're working on. Promote investments, build manufacturing, create the base, government spending, again for future building infrastructure, you have the logistics, lowering the cost, mas maraming gusto magnegosyo sa atin kasi maganda na yung logistics natin, kumarami na maganda na infrastructure. So that these exports can grow faster than imports. So, yun po. But that's the kind of structure that, economic structure that we are seeing right now. So, and I'll show you another chart. Uh, our chart is uh, unemployment rate, okay, nasabi na po natin, and, and service sector, uh, service sector is still growing, and industry is growing. Uh, Okay, let me go to the next chart. And inflation is still being managed. Don't worry about inflation. Balikan ko po yung inflation later. But just on the... Uh, uh, babalikan natin yung inflation. Don't worry, don't worry. Na iba yung ano eh. Uh, okay, business confidence. The reason mataas ang investment. Still a positive, uh, a high business confidence level of 30%. And on the industry alone, it's 36%. Tapia nasa 14, less than 
So good business confidence, meaning they want to invest more or reinvest their capital. Okay, so nandiyan yung momentum. And again, more data on investment. This is the foreign direct investment. These are actual investment registering in the central bank, equity coming in, and foreign funds coming in from 8.3 to 10 billion last year. This year, better than this year, this year we're no, this year we're, we're even growing 52% year to date of FDI. Okay, on the BOI, ito naman yung mga registered investment. Oh, FDI pa rin to. BOI, 90% increase year to date. And last year we hit the record. For the 50 year history of border investment, last year was 617 billion pesos, 50 year history record. Growing 40%. And this year we're trending still 19%. So, Again, good uh, indicators that to lead to lead the momentum of growth. That's why we're saying we're on a breakout. And I mentioned it's led by manufacturing, 7.6%. Food manufacture, like Oishi, uh, still accounting for the biggest part of manufacturing. And this is what we're trying to solve, the, the trade deficit. And... Philippine China, na kwento na natin, there's a huge deficit now, but but our trade, total trade's been growing. China's an important partner. First trading, number one trading partner. Number four in terms of our export market. Number one source of imports. Okay. <coughs> Dari ha? Bal balikan ko lang yung, nawala yung aking, yung sa cement. Tagad naman. <laughs> ah, pasensya na. <laughs> Dapat nandito yan eh. Ayan, ayan. Part of the growth story ko to eh. Dapat to nandun sa manahari. Sorry po. Now, ngayon lang kami nag-beat kasi nung aking kasama. Uh, what I'm saying is the growth we're, we're experiencing, so investment-led and manufacturing-led, ito pa, other indicators. For the longest time, even if you look at cement demand, Napaka-stable lang niya. Steady. It's not growing. But in the past years, you can see the growth now. It's like 2 million metric tons being added every year. Now, we've talked to some business chambers coming from Korea, Taiwan. They were saying, we were also a poor country before. But when we started to see our steel, cement, cement no? this is also cement, and then the steel consumption, relatively flat, four, just big lang, six, seven, eight, nine. We call it inflection point. Yung bang slow ay big lang tumaas. No? That's an inflection point. When those countries experience those inflection points, sabi nila, tuloy-tuloy na yung growth momentum nila. Talagang no stopping them. And, and that, that's what they see is where the Philippines is right now. They believe that the Philippines is also hitting a very good inflection point. So that's really very encouraging. We're really seeing an, a very robust growth that will be sustainable. Again, wag lang may mega. No? Mega, alam niyo yung mega. No? Wag lang may kokontra. I mean, we only have one country. So I'm saying, what we're saying is that dapat sama-sama na, wala nang political color. Pagtulungan natin, tumuli-tuli yung growth natin because the growth of the country will benefit everyone. Each day, each year, na delay yung continuous growth, there are, again, poor people not escaping poverty. Di ba? Pag kinontra mo, sino ang nahihirapan? Pag may mga opposition dyan na may kokontrahin niya, sino ang mahihirapan? Tao rin. Kaya marami pang mahihirap. Pero kung lahat nagkakaisa, you look at China. Magkakaisa talaga yan. So, ang bilis ang growth din na, tuloy-tuloy, walang nega. Dapat ganun ang bansa natin. Just like what happened to Korea and to other countries, no? So, ganun dapat ang attitude ng Pilipino. Huwag na yung, ano, kung sino man maging president, even after us, the next president, basta walang gawing kalokohan, dapat full support lahat. Because, ang magbe-benefit na ang bayan. So, that's our, our, uh, our request. Yeah. So, because the inflection point is here, na it's happening, so, what ituloy-tuloy na natin yan. We lack capacity, we need to build capacities, and the momentum is here. Okay, so, let me now, so, wala pa, 10 minutes pa lang yun, no? Di ba? Okay, are you still awake? Yes. Uh, okay, so balikan ko yung kanina, baka sabihin nyo, iniwasan ko yung issue. Uh, inflation ba yun, yung kanina natin? 
Okay, so good things happening on the growth. The, the prospects are there. Other indicators showing that. <coughs> okay. And moving tourism, remittance, inflation. Okay. So, again, on inflation, marami na naman nagko-comment. Every day, binubukbog kami ng balita ang inflation. Kasi walang mabalitang iba ang dyaryo. No? Kailangan merong issue eh. So, every day, katatat ng interview, wala sila. Hindi nila, wala na silang masabi sa presidente. Napakataas ng trust rating. Very sincere. So, for, for a while, may sasabihin, uh, anong tawag doon? Uh, pang pang-provoke ang presidente, sasakyan naman ng media, no? para lang may mapag-usapan. Pero, ang bubog talaga yung inflation. But, do you know that, uh, wala tayong chart nun, no? So, we're hitting just 5%. Ah, yeah, it's here na. 5% ang average inflation, no, year to date. Did you know that how, how, how high the inflation were in the 70s? 31%, 20%? No? In the seven, late 70s, in the 80s, may 50%. Of course, understandable, yan yung Ninoy Aquino assassination, di ba? Nagkaroon ng debt crisis, etc. 22%, 14, 12, 19. Ramos time. After Ramos, <coughs> uh, after Ramos, Estrada na dito, no? 6%, 6.79, 9%. Tapos, uh, GMA, nagkaroon na rin ng 6, 8%, etc. Si Pinoy, swerte. Kasi dito yung time na ang baba ng oil price. So what we're saying is, we're totally dependent on, on oil imports. We don't produce oil, so we import all our oil requirements. So tinraktin natin yung, ito ba yung oil price? Yeah, WTI is a world oil price in red. So, sumasabay yung inflation, talaga it's highly correlated. Pag tumasa ang oil price, world market, taas din yung inflation natin. So, it's highly correlated. You can just see a huge jump and uh, sumasabay yung blue, yung inflation. No? So, it, it's really corre highly correlated. But, admittedly, this, and during the, the time of uh, uh, Kino, 2010, uh, look at the... WTI, medyo mababa, although nag-kick, ito na, ito na yung sumipa ngayon, 2016, up to this year. Okay, so you can imagine how inflation was really affected by the world market price of oil. But there's also some problems, of course, on the supply issue ng agriculture, the rice, the fish, etc. So that has to be addressed, non-monetary, by increasing supply, allowing more imports, improving productivity and increasing supply domestic supply of this agricultural product. So, DTI, together with DA, naki, naki, nagtulungan na po kami so that we can assure that there's enough rice, nagkaroon talaga ng problema nung na-announce na wala na raw bigas sa NFA. Ang NFA ang panglaban natin ng bigas eh. Pag nagkukulang, mababa ang inventory ng bigas, kailangan si NFA nagpapasok ng bigas so that the prices will stay calm and, and low. So that's important. And that's being addressed. There are, there are monetary uh, solutions like increasing interest rates, which Central Bank has been doing as well. Good thing, ito pa, so, so iwanan natin inflation. You can see naman that the inflation is relatively tamer, and it's not a runaway inflation. And the good news also is that as of uh, to today, uh, we can see prices going down. Prices, yung mga wala sa Pilipinas, prices of gulay, na halos every day, yung sinasabi nila, pataas ang pataas. No? Now it's one half. Ang umiiyak naman ngayon, hindi na consumer, farmers naman. Anong gagawin namin? So it's really a balance. You cannot always look for lowest price of this commodity because you have to protect also the, the kita of the farmers, no? the income. So um, the rice also has started to go down from 45 lowest before. You're now seeing Aside from the NFA of 27 and 32 pesos for regular and well milled rice, we're seeing, because imports are coming in, may 32, 34 pesos, 36, and up to 38 pesos for imported rice. So, nakakapita na tayo ng mga murang bigas na available. And we put an SRP with the DA na 39 pesos and 43 pesos for imported rice, and for local, 40 pesos, 44, and 47. 
varying grades of uh, quality of rice. Tapos yung mga mahal na rice, we don't care about them. In small market lang yan, very niche market. So we don't put an SRV there. But what we're saying is, yung kapabayan natin will always now have a choice of you know, cheaper rice na available and they're not uh, at hostage just to buy the, the big, the higher priced rice. Other good news, of course, remittances. Thanks to our OSW kababayans, we continue to uh, bring in the remittances, although the growth is 2.4, it used to be 5%. So, so hopefully, what we're seeing also is uh, some kababayans going back home and working, kasi marami ng trabaho na, uh, na requirements no, sa back home because of the uh, resurgence in the economy. Okay, next is, uh, Tourism, China, again, as mentioned by the ambassador, double. That's one of the benefits also when we started to be good friends again with China, aside from exports increasing, almost doubling, our, our, our tourism uh, sector benefited from the doubling of China. Used to be 500,000 food visitors from China. It's now close to 1 million. And we can see, I think, close to 2 million, said the ambassador in Econ Gen. No, so, marami na silang ipaprocess from Shanghai. So, kasi kalahati doon ang gagaling sa Shanghai. Tama po ba? No? So, marami rin. And of course, from other countries. So, I think we're, we are trending about 7 million to, to risk, uh, tourists no? uh, this year. And positive business sentiment, we mentioned this. We mentioned FDI, BOI, manufacturing, and the trade deficit that should reverse if we are able to build the base, and <clears throat> the Philippine-China. Ito naman, these are the key exports, our key exports to China. So you can imagine, you can see that some there are some similarities, what we export, what we import, because we are part of the global supply chain. So in other words, we, we export some of the minerals, we export semicon, tapos we also import some semicon. No? Kasi mga inputs to what we export, so we value add on, on what we import. There were, in the, in the statement kanina, uh, someone mentioned 86% of all our exports of the world no, would, have our, would have importation also from the world. In other words, it's really an interdependent trading. Diba? So, wala, bihira lang, 14% lang yung indigenous mula sa umpisa from the raw material hanggang in-export ay 100%. Si 86% daw, may import component. So talagang nag-umiikot lang yung mga produkto, nag-value add. At ito naman yung ini-import natin. The oil and and some, of course, iron steel and also semicon. And the other good things, okay, still within, uh, before 8 o'clock, I have some magandang story, you know, the Philippines, that's why we're able to attract more investments, is that Philippines is, aside from our domestic market of 106 million, growing by about 2% year on year, we're part of a, we have good access uh, to market, some of FTA partners, free trade agreement. We have an FTA with Japan, with Europe, F, uh, EFTA. Ito yung outside EU, the four countries, you know, Switzerland, Iceland, Liechtenstein, Norway. So EFTA, we have a new FTA there. I don't know, yeah. And then we have the GSP Plus, Special Trade Preference of, uh, 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 to EU, where in uh, 7,000 or 6,700 items are entering the EU market, zero duty. We have a GSP with the US, where in 3,500 of our products entering zero duty as a US. So maraming, in other words, if you produce in the Philippines, manufacture in the Philippines, you have an access to these markets. The good thing in the U.S., we've, we're, I don't know if you know, that we're trying to work on explore already the FTA, some FTA discussion. Not yet official, because in the U.S., kailangan dumaan pa sa Congress before they can officially say that they've started negotiating with the Philippines. But to us, um, if we see that we, we can start exploring, we, we, there are some talks already that can lead to an FTA because we've settled a lot of issues with trade issues with, with the U.S. And we are a WTO member. Of course, we're part of ASEAN, the ASEAN 10, 
and ASEAN 10 as as partnership, sorry, as partnership with, with China, Japan, South Korea, India, Australia. Ito yung tinat naririnig yung RCEP, Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. Pag pinagsama-sama yung big economies ng ASEAN 10 plus plus uh, the China over a billion, India over a billion, and the other countries, 3.5 billion yung market na yun. Imagine, Philippines is part of the 3.5 billion. That's one half of the world's population already, and one-third of the world's economy. So Philippines is part of that bigger economy, bigger, we have an FDA. So producing the Philippines, you have access to this market. So that's the kind of uh, investment attraction we're, we're telling everyone. Okay, next is uh, selling point in Aten. We're sort of in the middle, and it's just about three to four hours away yung mga ibang uh, countries in Asia. We're still uh, number one. Oh, yun. Ito yung magandang survey na lumabas um, a couple of months ago. Philippines is the number one in 20 best countries around the world to invest in, according to a U.S. news survey. And then, yung World Economic Forum Index, no? hindi yung World Bank, ha? you know, protest natin yung World Bank. Two weeks ago, lumabas din ang World Economic Forum our ranking improved from 68 to 56. Okay. New World Bank, may protest come because they use a smaller base. If you would like to know the details, I can discuss with you that one. But that smaller base, mali yung pagka-apply nila. So, we're simulating, we, sh we would have improved also from 113 to about 105. Dapat nag-improve din yung ranking sa World Bank. But, may question nga kami doon sa methodology. And okay, but anyway, again, looking at what we mentioned earlier, the yung robust uh, momentum, no, yeah, the breakout uh, story natin, the Philippines will become the 16th largest economy by 2050. Pa yan, hopefully it will be sooner than 2050. 16th largest. I think 30 something no? largest. So, pag, pag ganyan kalakas yung growth rate natin, we're like China growing 9% for so many years. Talagang lumaki yung economy. Maraming yumaman dito sa China. So hopefully that will be the story also of Philippines. And okay, I'll skip this. A good story on cement, steel. And we mentioned, you've been hearing build, build, build. And China, thanks to China, has been a strong partner on the build, build, build again that will help logistics, economic development, and bring more regional growth sa, sa countryside because of the infrastructure. No, that, that, that will allow more movement, lower cost uh, movement of uh, people and goods. Uh, okay, we're creating inclusive, innovative industrialization strategy. I won't go to, into this, but we're also looking into mga higher tech uh, and innovative products as our way to value add. In other words, hindi na yung run of the mill, common, no innovation, because we believe it's an innovation that you can extract value and have better pricing, better profitability. Kaya yung mga innovation ni Sherry, yung magandang profit margin niya kasi may innovation siya. Mas mahal niya na siya charge yung mga conscious customer. Because they see value, uh, di ba? So hindi naman mahal lang, it's value for money. So anyway, so that's, that's uh, the drive for, for the country's industrialization strategy. To connect basically the R&D, uh, the, the academic institution with the requirement, research requirement ng industry. No? And therefore, yung research work nila will be relevant uh, kasi gagamitin ng industry. Yung industry naman, knowing na nandiyan ng R&D, will always look at solutions, so R&D solutions to their problem. So again, it will lead them to more innovation because there's always an R&D input. So industry consulting naman the R&D and academic institution. So it works uh, it works uh, both ways. And and of course government is the one orchestrating this things. Okay, now some reforms. Uh train, maybe a QA if you want me to detail out why it's why it's not the cause of the inflation number one and why in the train two incentives are not being removed. Okay, I can explain that. No? So, yung pinagtatakotan kasi na, oh, mukhang wala na incentives, kawawa na exporters natin. The good news is, in fact, just today, we're still negotiating and discussing with 
other agencies on how we can find a win-win solution such that uh, those per high performing investments will continue to benefit and get those incentives, especially you mga exporters, no? Sa mga eco zones. Performing high performance investment will continue to enjoy the incentives. That's what we're working on. And a longer transition period. Okay. Period. Okay. Then trabaho, that's the trabaho bill. So we're not reducing in uh, incentives. The security of tenure, yung mga contractualization, endo, that's uh, being worked on uh, right now so that we don't remove the contractualization option of businesses. That's really important. They, yung pwede pang mag-outsource, mag-contract out. So we're trying to keep that because that's the business model that uh, for a business, uh, uh, a company to be competitive. Okay, we launched the ease of doing business. So IRR has been prepared by DTI and Civil Service Commission, the interagency po yan. Tapos na, pinas namin ng deadline, October 22. And, uh, but what we're saying here is that, it, well, in the law kasi, it has to be issued by the Director General of the anti rentic Authority, which is created in that new law. Unfortunately, hindi pa po na-appoint ng Director General. So yun na lang ang kailangan, the officials, uh, issue ones, the official issue ones of that. But just to say that ease of doing business law, as a law, is already in effect. And therefore, kung kayo po <clears throat> nahirapan sa mga transaksyon nyo with government, you can already file and invoke this law and file complaint to relevant authorities. For now, without the ARTA, uh, the anti relative authority, it can be lodged with uh, the DTI and the Civil Service Commission. And we will raise it uh, and have it investigated. Kung merong hindi uh, hindi sumusunod dito sa patas na ito. Because ang patas na ito, sila sabi, for simple transaction, it has to be only three days. For complex transaction, it has to be only seven days maximum. And for highly technical, 20 days. And also, it will be in the citizen's charter, in the website, in the offices of these, all these frontline government agencies. One of the documents are required, hindi yung Nasubmit nyo na lahat, sasabihin sa inyo, ah, may kulang pa ho, balik kayo. Pagbalik nyo, ah, eto pa rin ang kulang. Talagang dinitilay kayo. Di ba, it happens. No? So ngayon, then, pag nakompleto na doon, walang, no reason not to accept your application. It has to be accepted. And yung time, mag, yung time, mag-uumpisa na. Yung countdown, mag-uumpisa na. And isa pa, the good news to many entrepreneurs here, yung mga kaibigan natin sa, sa Cebu at Manila, at sa Davao, ay, ay, Yung application nila pag pumukuha ng fire safety inspection certificate, kailangan bumili kayo ng fire extinguisher sa amin. Kailangan bumili kayo ng fire safety system sa amin. Bawal na, bawal na, bawal na po yun. Lahat sa batas na yan. Hindi na kayo malirequire at may penalties specific in the provision in the ease of doing business. Just for that, yung humihingi at nire-require na kanil kanilang sistema ang gamitin, bawal yan. It has to be from anyone that can give you that can give you that protection. So, wala nang bentahan ng fire extinguisher na yan. Lumang story na yan. Okay. And, oh, success stories, I'll just keep this, but, you know, a lot of success stories have been inspiring us. Sherry is one, and sila Mr. Chu, Sila Ms. Melanie Nang and mga successful entrepreneurs, sila Nono Espeleta, sa Saibu, ang dami rin, no? sila Bonnie Pahes, no? uh, sa PFA, name it. At dito ang example natin, sila Injap Siya, si George Winiki, Tokyo Tempura. A lot of new concepts, starting from zero, from scratch, but they all made it big. No? And, and what we're saying is that yung ating mga kamag-anak, kaysa umasa na umasa sa inyo, Pwede silang magkumpisa ng negosyo nila para may uwi ang kayo pag uh, nanegosyo pag balik nyo sa Pilipinas. So yun na, I'll stop there. Um, I'm within the, the time uh, period. So maraming salamat to and uh, I can open the floor for questions. If any.